continues. It won't be long before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only gonna get worse for you. That was a clip from Batman hitting theaters this weekend. The latest installment of the superhero franchise aims to get moviegoers back to the big screen as the return to the theaters remains a little slow when you compare it to where things were pre-pandemic. Let's bring in our very own Ali Canal with the very latest here. And Ali, if Spider-Man is any indication, we know people like to show up for these superhero movies. Uh, what are the expectations for this one? Expectations are really high. Many experts believe that this movie is going to outperform, surge above that $100 million mark when it comes to domestic ticket sales. Box Office Pro has an estimate between $130 million to $170 million. And Sean Robbins, the chief analyst there, told me that this film is going to heavily rely on that adult audience returning and showing up to the theater because this is a very adult movie, but it could also be the new generation's Batman. It's been 10 years since the Christopher Nolan films, so this could be the next iteration of the franchise to make a very big splash. And historically speaking here, Batman films have performed very well, as most superhero films tend to do at the box office. According to Comscore, between 1989 and 2005, Batman movies averaged between $250 million to 400 million in global box office ticket sales. But fast forward to 2008, The Dark Knight just blew every other Batman film out of the water with more than $1 billion worldwide. Now this movie, it's also going to be an experiment of sorts. AMC is charging more for the Batman tickets compared to other releases. Now this is a new pricing model that the theater chain is going to be testing. It's unclear just how much more a ticket to see the Batman will be for new blockbusters releases, but sources tell me that this is already a model that's been employed in some international markets. So there is already a precedent set for this. And we have been seeing this trend, obviously accelerated by the pandemic, of the theater becoming a more premium experience. And that's where those higher ticket prices could come into play. Maybe sure and so times are going to be more expensive. Where you sit could determine the level of the price. Premium screens could cost a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how consumers react to this because it will test certain elements of the experience a bit, but we'll have to wait and see what the longer term impact will be for the industry if this experiment is successful. Yeah, well, I heard that Zoe Kravitz is in it. So, you know, for me personally, I will spend whatever much it takes to go see this movie. But um, I wanted to ask you about uh, another thing on the media side of things. Disney Plus apparently is going to introduce an ad supported subscription in 2022. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, Disney confirming that this new ad-supported subscription tier will kick off in the U.S. in late 2022 and then rolling out internationally in 2023. Now, we don't have specifically the date of this. We also don't know what the pricing will be, but we do know that competitors that have gone with this ad-supported strategy have priced it at around $5 a month. The Disney Plus current plan is $8 a month, so I think that $5 pricing seems like a fair price point to me. And of course, this is just Another example of how these streaming giants are trying to lure subscribers, keep up with the competition. I do think that offering various pricing tiers, ad supported or not, is a good move. Personally, for me, I use the ad supported tier for Hulu. So I do think that there is demand there. And Disney Plus is continuing to be an important asset to the Disney company. Disney plans to spend at least $8 billion per year on the platform by 2024. Disney Plus currently currently has well over 130 million subscribers with the expectation to have between 230 million to 260 million by 2024. And the platform has only been in operations for two years and is already becoming a really strong leader in this space. So I don't think this was a decision that was taken lightly. And I do think it's going to set Disney up to just continue to be that leader in the streaming wars moving forward. I mean, those ads are just so brutal, though. On Hulu, you watch like a like a 22-minute show, and you have to go through four or five rounds of of ads. It's pretty ridiculous. Well, there's I don't so know. many services out there. You got to pick and choose. Like, if you don't watch Disney Plus all the time, then maybe that's a good one to just have the content, but deal with the ads. I don't know. It's something that consumers are going to have to think about. 
Exactly. And at that point, it all matters about whether or not that few extra dollars is worth it. But Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal, thanks so much for breaking all that down for us.